Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi guys and welcome to today's episode. I went to a fellow's house, which was amazing and I wish I could have showed it on camera, but they were camera shy um, and that happens sometimes. But I ended up buying a bunch of boxes of stuff. So I thought today would be a good opportunity for us to do um, sort of an unboxing and go through the trunk of my Cadillac and see exactly what I got. So I'm gonna unload this stuff to my store. We'll go through it on the counter and uh, show you the sorts of things that came in today. Follow along. It has been a really snowy day today and I'm at the shop right now. I've got to unload and get everything out of the back of my car, but it's a pretty good haul. Let's go get it unpacked and bring it in. It has been coming down pretty much all day. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. If I ever get pulled over, people are gonna ask a lot of questions. I have an airplane in the back of my car and it's not a small one either. <laughs> it's like a full on, that was not easy to get in there. So I'll grab that out in a sec, but we'll open up the trunk and I'll start to unpack this stuff. The house I went to was completely packed, but I was able to get a few things. So we've got some records and signs and boxes. Um, I think the best thing to do is just pack it all inside and I'll lay it out and show you what there is. Now this is gonna be tricky. The airplane is so big, it doesn't fit through just one door, but this is a four door hard top. So I've got a little bit more wiggle room than you'd have on a normal car. There we go. That's no small airplane. This is a nice vintage GB racer with engine. Um, you can either fly it or put it up on your ceiling and hang it, look at it. Cool thing. I think it looks really neat. It's gonna probably hang from our store very soon here. We're gonna be opening up in about 10 minutes and it's the last day before our Christmas sales end. Um, Sean is showing up. Oh, hey, look, it's Sean. <laughs> Everybody's asking, why doesn't Sean appear on more videos? But look there, <laughs> now, there you are. Damn. Here you are. Um, I did a little shopping this morning. Well, actually I did it last night and I'm bringing it in this morning. Um, so I'm just doing a little unboxing video here, going through it all. Um, so I'll probably just go box by box and see what there is. And then uh, I might need your help, Sean, putting some of this stuff away. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. okay. Box number one. We have 1970s, I'm gonna say probably like late 70s MPC Corvette customizing kit. Uh, I'm gonna crack this open and make sure it's inside, but love the graphics of that box. The box isn't in the best condition. It's been taped up over time, but um, there are lots of collectors for model kits and lots of collectors who um, build and even restore painted model kits. If you ever come across these at a yard sale, and I'm kind of just peeking in there, but yeah, it's uh, it's unbuilt, thankfully, and it looks to be all there. So a nice 70s unbuilt Corvette model kit. I'll set that guy right there. And you can see these guys. This is an early Tonka. I don't know which one's going to come out easier. Probably this. Tonka Road Grader. And oftentimes you'll find these and they're completely destroyed. And why? Well, because they're a sandbox toy and they get left out in the rain, they get left out in the open. So to find one that has the original decals on it, that's in good condition, shiny paint, that's a good piece for a collector. It's not 100% mint in box, but that's still a nice collector grade piece. And there's a second one in here too, which looks like a, a crane. And I don't know if this one's Tonka. Jones XL Crane. No, it is. Triang, which is a British company. Um, nicely made. It does still have the hook. A lot of times that's missing. Um, so it'll need a little bit of restringing through here to make it work. But the idea is you've got these little um, levers on here that'll make it go up and down or turn left and right. Um, so a little bit of work to get that uh, stringing fixed up on the, on the hook and that thing should be good to go. And what's at the bottom of the box? It's a, uh, oh, it's a Pez space gun. This is a cool 50s kind of piece. So instead of, um, you know, disjointedly taking candy out of the neck of a figure, you can actually shoot it directly into your mouth like a projectile. Probably a really good reason why they don't make these anymore. But um, super cool piece of Pez history. And there are, um, you'd be surprised, lots of Pez collectors out there. They look for the early, early stuff like this and they look for uh, Pez characters with um, what they call no feet because they added the feet on later so you could stand them up. Um, so the early ones don't have that. Uh, this is a nice piece. It looks to be in pretty good shape. A little bit of separation there at the top. 
but uh, nothing that uh, wouldn't go back together with, with some ease. Surprisingly, some Pez space guns from this era, especially the red one, can be worth a few hundred dollars, but that is a nice find for the bottom of an old cardboard box. Got the uh, string all hooked up and working, so everything is functioning on that guy again. It's ready for the floor. Box number three. Um, this is funny. I've had these sorts of guys in before. They're a little decorative piece from the 1970s that you could have got. But what's neat about this, it actually is branded Honda. So that's like a little CT70 Honda. He is dusty as all get out. So I'll see if uh, maybe Sean is motivated to uh, Windex him or clean him off a little bit for me. But a neat piece. Um, there was a lot of motorcycle gear at this place. I really wish I could have showed you because it was really, really neat. Um, but that's a neat guy, a neat little figure. And some of them I recall, being, yeah, see, he's got the initials of the, uh, the whoever designed it on the bottom there. But that's just a fun thing to have, especially if you're into uh, vintage Honda little mini Z50s or Trail 70s. That's a neat piece to have. And, well, slightly less remarkable. That is a nothing phone. That is a, you know, it's not gonna, it's gonna go to the eco station and get recycled. But these rotary phones, people do actually come in looking for them. You guys probably know that even the phone that we have up and running, one of the phones that works at our store is a rotary dial phone. Um, this phone right here, you know, just a decorative piece. You could probably make it work and put it in your house if you wanted to, but it's a novelty now. A lot of kids have no idea how to work a rotary phone. Um, so parents like to buy these things and confuse their children because that is a parent's job. And then here's another little kind of banana colored rotary dial phone. <laughs> Look, they wrote on possible collectible. Like they weren't sure. They're like, nah. well, I ended up buying it. So you will know, hope somebody else thinks it's kind of neat. Hey, that stuff is sorted. Now we got this box. Now, if you're not familiar with what Boltaco is, it was a uh, like flat track racing, dirt bike, off-road motorcycle. They're no longer around. Um, the dealership that was here closed down like 30 years ago. But I got some paraphernalia from those days. So the hat, um, there's a nice vintage kidney belt and you can kind of tell the age of these things by what type of zippers they are. It's not a YKK zipper, this is a Talon. This is probably a, you know, 60s or 70s era kidney belt. And you wear this um, when you're riding your motorcycle. It kind of keeps your, your back supported and keeps you in place. So it's nice finding old motorcycle gear. Of course, when you find motorcycle gear, you find motorcycle license plates. Um, people like to get these vintage plates for their bikes, which are on display. Um, if you have a car here, you can actually register your car with old plates if you have the front and back. So we sell a lot of license plates and there are collectors of these things too. But I got a nice big stack of plates and there's some really neat ones in here. A couple that were in here that were a little bit more interesting was the um, Canada's Arctic, the Northwest Territory plates. They're shaped like a polar bear. There's a lot of collectors for these because, well, it's a fun looking license plate. People like to put them up on their wall. And I got a couple in here, including some from the 50s, all sorts of different things. So that's gonna take a while to go through. But the rest of this box is quite full. Um, there's a nice old oil can, 1950s era Pennzoil oil can, and it still has all the oil in it. It's still intact, thankfully not leaking. And this one is kind of cute. It's a tiny little miniature violin, little novelty piece. I guess you play that when uh, maybe a deal doesn't go great. You can play your tiny violin and be sad about it. It's even got a nice little bow. Cute little uh, thing, possibly a nice little gift for Christmas time. That'll be able to find a home pretty easily, I'm sure. People like odd little things like that. And there's all sorts of toys in this box. Um, oh, this is neat. It's a, it's a mug from Hawaii, but it looks like a model aircraft engine. And I have a couple friends in mind that collect model aircraft. That might be uh, up their alley. And I got another one of these. This is the second one I've had like in the past month. It's a 20 meal train from Borax. You'd send away with your Borax uh, coupons and you'd end up getting this little plastic mule train sent in. Uh, well, I sold the last one. I think we sold, sold it for like 20 bucks or so. And this is another one there. And this is a 1924 CIL uh, Canadian Industries. They, did, they made ammunition and stuff. But blasting cap, nothing inside of it. So I don't have to be too careful. Um, pretty neat collectible. And yes, people do collect these sorts of things. So that was kind of a fun box. We ended up with a really nice Lincoln Toys ambulance, just post-war piece, really good condition, still has the stickers on the side, a little bit of a cleaning, that'll shine right back up. Uh, a little um, rubber plastic uh, sort of fire truck. It's a wind-up, which is trying to work but not working fully. 
and a tin plate general metal toys uh little tracked crawler kind of like a caterpillar um the other track had completely disintegrated you can find tracks like this online that uh, does affect his value and i wound it up it's not working but fun little piece and a lot of people just put these on a shelf so it doesn't really matter but lots of neat stuff came out of there um the little boat and this was there too uh alberta old timers motocross first place award a brass plaque um, a little Corgi Fordson tractor or Ford tractor. So fun little box. It's just going to be a lot of pricing. There's only uh, one box left and then some stuff over there. So we'll go through that and then uh, I'll be able to start putting the stuff away. There were a pile of records and a lot of them were really good ones too. Um, you, Sean, are, yes. you're a Beach Boy guy, aren't you? I'm a big Beach Boys guy. Yeah. yeah. More like the Pet Sounds kind of era or... Yeah, I mean, you can uh, you can kind of train yourself to really like the early stuff, but it's not so much my uh, not, That's not not your so thing. much my cup of tea. Well, there is a lot of Ventures. earlier stuff. Surfing with the Ventures, of course, Johnny Cash Johnny at Folsom Cash. Prison, From Sea to Shining Sea. Oh, nice. A couple Johnny Cash things. Cow Sills. Um, this was neat. The Super Stocks. <laughs> Surf Route 101. Yeah, that... Uh... Oh, it looked like it had a 45 in with it, which probably oh, isn't yeah. there anymore. Bonus 45, probably because they had one song that was popular and they, they're like, oh, there it is as a single. <laughs> this was, I like the cover on this one. Bikes or black boots and bikes featuring the kickstands, hill climbing <laughs> instrumentals and vocals. So I guess music to listen to while you think of riding your dirt bike. Uh, and then it's just pretty much all pictures of motorcycles on the back. Death Valley Run, Devil on Wheels, Hill Climb, Mean Streak Sidecar, Two Wheel Showstopper, Hall and Honda. That's neat. Bikes were a big deal back in the 60s, like a super big deal. Zeppelin 2. Yeah, that's an original, I think, too, isn't it? Believe so. Might, uh... now, the trick is, you know, well, you can tell from looking at the um, at the, the wax itself and the label okay, in gonna... terms of what issue it is. Yeah, it's um, a Canadian pressing. Yeah, sure. that's original. I know from the red label, that's that's the real deal. Okay. Um, so some of these we'll have to do a little research on. But check this out. Mr. Eliminator, Dick Dale and his Deltones, king of the surf guitar. Um, <laughs> He doesn't look like he's happy to be. I think they probably told him to look mean in that picture. Hey, uh, Dick, you got to look real mean like you're really driving that car. And he's like, all right, does that look mean enough? And they should have said, sure, well, we got the picture, Dick. That's perfect. Has nothing to do with the fact that he's a surf guitar player. But I guess race cars were in. <laughs> they thought it looked cool. And then there's another one. Dick Dale and his Deltones checkered flag. Yeah, he's got that intense icy stare. And look, another racing helmet. He's all about that. But I guess this one is all about race cars. Uh, 426 Superstock, Mag Wheels, Big Black Cadillac. These are just such fun albums. You know, if you don't, if you, even if you're not a fan of the music, the, you know, the al album art is pretty fun. <laughs> of course, Queen's made a big comeback in the last while with Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, so Queen albums that they never used to sell much like a couple years ago couldn't sell a oh. Queen album and now Wouldn't they sell like that. crazy yeah so nice big stack of records we're gonna go through everything from Canadian band the Guess Who ironically a Canadian band famous for having a song American Woman um, there's <laughs> Annette's Beach Party if you remember Annette uh, the Monkees uh, the Doors there's gonna be all kinds of good stuff in here every single album is pretty decent. Um, there's some Beach Boys for you right there, Sean. <laughs> nice. Summer days and summer nights. Oh, that one's good. Um, so you don't <laughs> mind searching through these and getting some prices on them today? Oh, absolutely. Okay. We'll uh, take that on. Perfect. Now, there are a few model aircraft engine in here as well. People generally want the four stroke ones. Uh, these are two stroke, but um, they're still a good engine. And uh, there's a couple Lego sets, including this one, which looks to be, you know, intact. Early, early Lego from the 70s before they had many figures. And then uh, the game, I want to bite your finger. I remember I had that when I was a kid. Oops, I had that one when I was a kid. And it used to scare the heck out of me because you'd have to put your finger inside of Dracula's mouth. And uh, occasionally he would just chomp down and leave these two little red ink marks on your finger. And I was, I was definitely terrified of that guy when I was a kid. So maybe out of, um, I had a morbid attraction to this toy because uh, I remember being terrified from it when I was a child, but some neat stuff there. So you would think just looking at this that it's a bunch of clothing, but it is, it's clothing. But this is in fact a Boltaco racing jersey. This isn't just any old piece of clothing. This is what you would have worn at the track. And not only did I get that, there's a Boltaco racing jacket, which is really neat. 
Um, this is a much earlier piece. This is more uh, of a 1950s motorcycle race jacket. And what I noticed that's cool about this, uh, where is it? Look at the patch. That's the 1950s Canadian Motorcycle Association patch. It's got that flying beaver. In fact, I have this same exact patch on my leather jacket that I sometimes wear because it's from the late 50s, early 60s. And this is a really nice piece of motorcycle history. Another t-shirt, this one's from Malcolm Smith Racing Products. Look at that guy flying off the back of his bike there. I'm sure a few people have had a couple moments like that. <laughs> you can always tell the graphics from the 80s. They all have this kind of look with this uh, applied transfer on there. Take it out and play with it. Cool looking shirt in pretty good shape too. Nice to find vintage clothes like this. And we do sell this stuff on occasion at the shop. And the rest of this box underneath the clothing was more toys. 1940s Lincoln Toys, I believe that's a cement mixer is what that is. That's pretty neat. Um, probably an old Ertl tractor or Hubley perhaps. A lot of times they'll stamp the name on it somewhere, but um, Ertl and Hubley were kind of the big ones back in the 50s. Uh, and a wind up, it looks like a Hafner. Yeah, it's a Hafner train set with track. Oh, check this out. More space guns. Pyrotomic, now that's a great name for a space gun. We'll get your kid the Pyrotomic space gun. That's neat, I love it. And I think there's another one in here too. Check that out, super cool. Even a nice little wind up submarine in here too. All kinds of fun toys. I just love getting boxes like this to go through. All kinds of neat stuff in here. Poor little army guy who's lost his vehicle. But, you know, I might come across a vehicle someday. So pretty neat. I'm, uh, yeah, really happy with the selection of stuff I got. Now, the trick, hey, Sean, we got to put all this stuff away. Here we go. So that's it. Just in time, too. Uh, Christmas is around the corner. It's our last Saturday before Christmas. The store is starting to fill up. So I'm going to sign off. So you guys have a wonderful holiday season. We'll see you all soon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And... Bye for now.